All right. Um, three after 6 p.m. at least in Germany. <clears throat> Let's get started. Um, I try to like admit the people at the same time. <laughs> I hope this will not confuse me too much. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone um, and thanks for joining. We are more than 70 participants in this meeting, which is really, really great. Um, yeah, welcome. Um, my name is Christine from Kubermatic. And before we get started with the talk, I want to um, lose a few words on ourselves. We are a sponsor of this meetup or of various meetup groups, which now are all remote. Um, there we go. And we are one of the leading Kubernetes experts here in Europe. Um, we have created two open source slash open core solutions, Cube One and Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, because we wanted to um, make Kubernetes more, um, not more complex, more boring, less complex. And um, we are a team of about 60 people um, across the world um, because we are a remote first company, but our headquarters are in Hamburg. This is where I am sitting right now. We are particularly proud of the fact that in 2019, we've been the number five top commander to the Kubernetes project just right after um, VMware and Google and um, all the important other ones. And I think we are currently on number six or number seven, but this can be all found in the GitHub statistics um, as well as our um, solutions. <clears throat> then, yeah, this is our portfolio or our offering. I have more people joining. <laughs> um, yeah, this is our offering. We, in 2016, we decided to create, create um, like a business model around Kubernetes. We have Kubernetes Kubernetes platform, which is open core and which really empowers people to automate um, up to thousands of Kubernetes clusters across any infrastructure. So we have a lot of public clouds, um, integrated, but you can also run it in your data center or in edge and IoT, IoT environments. And also like you can, like it's a central platform, so you can manage like the data center and the clouds and the edge environments from one dashboard. So this is for really, really big Kubernetes installations. And then we have Cube One, that's the smaller brother. It's a command line tool and it helps you to automate the deployment and the lifecycle management. Um, of Kubernetes and again, just like Kubernetes, Kubernetes platform, this is infrastructure agnostic, so it can run everywhere. As said, both can be found on um, GitHub. And as the cloud native transformation is much more than just technology, we do provide training and professional services as well. And we are certified for both. We are certified service provider and a cert certified um, training partner of the CNCF. That was the marketing part. <laughs> uh, now I want to welcome Laszlo. Um, he's a DevOps consultant at Gimlet or Gimlet IO. I hope I pronounced it rightly. Um, and he will talk about logging metrics ingress on K3D under five minutes within GitOps. Before we get started, um, yeah. The short information, this meetup will be recorded and distributed later. So if you don't want to be seen on YouTube, um, you better switch off your camera <laughs> um, that, or and use like uh, another name. Um, this is the first information. The second information is if you have questions, please just post them in the uh, uh, Q&A, um, in the Q&A window and then we will answer them later on. And with this, I will ah, add, no, one very last thing. If you have questions on Kubermatic, um, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to me. It's christine at kubermatic.com. Uh, can be for any purpose. And then I will try to um, address you um, to the right person in our team. And with this, I really want to uh, hand over to Laszlo and uh, yeah, enjoy the meetup. Uh, thank you, Christine. So, uh, hey everyone, I am Laszlo Fogas and uh, I am talking to you from uh, Budapest, Hungary. I hope you see my screen uh, clearly and you hear me very well. And let's just uh, shout in the chat. 
And uh, first of all, a uh, big congrats on the uh, statistics, Christina, the, the, the contributor count. Like I did, did not know that, that uh, you, you are contributing so much upstream. So that's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> I, right. I will forward this to the team. <laughs> all right. So uh, just first, uh, just a little introduction about uh, who am I and uh, why am I talking to you? Uh, so I've been an independent DevOps consultant for the past uh, four years. Uh, I've been building uh, uh, internal developer platforms on top of Kubernetes, on public clouds, offerings, Amazon, AWS, Google, and so on. And uh, recently I started building some uh, products. Uh, partly because I was a little frustrated uh, in the beginning of this year when I started a new project and then I had to build everything from scratch again. So I, uh, I started building two things. One is uh, oneclickinfrastructure.com, which I'm going to show uh, to you uh, in this evening. And the other one is, uh, is Gimlet.io, which is a, a part open source, part uh, consulting uh, offering. Um, I, I live in Budapest and uh, have been living in the Nordics uh, for seven years, and, I, and I'm active in the cloud native Nordics community, uh, which, which where I'm, I'm uh, getting much of my knowledge from. So, so big uh, thanks for those guys. I used to be a Java developer at some point. Uh, I was an engineering lead as well. Nowadays, I'm, I'm mostly doing uh, Golang and uh, also doing some front end hacking in React. You will see uh, the level of that <laughs> shortly. That, this is my Twitter. Laszlo CPH, and uh, that's my LinkedIn. And uh, that, that's about me, and I'm going to get into oneclickinfo.com, and I'm going to tell you what this is about, and uh, then I'm going to show it to you in the demo. Uh, I promised you in the uh, meetup title uh, an ingress controller, uh, logging solution, and uh, metrics. So I'm going to install all those components, and I'm going to do that uh, utilizing GitOps. And because the tooling is so advanced with Kubernetes these days, I am trying to do that under five minutes. Lash, uh, Lashlo? Yes, um, yes. I'm getting questions um, that you, that if you want to share your screen. All right. Because uh, we are not seeing it right now. You do not. Good. So I'm, oh yes, uh, I actually want to share my screen. I just have to switch my virtual camera. Uh, do you see it now? Now we can see it. Yeah, good. I'm getting a lot of yes in the chat. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, I am also uh, testing a new setup here. So I have a virtual camera where I am, I can put together different screens and I forget to switch between them. So uh, this is the bio. So uh, again, self-employed self DevOps consultant, uh, four years building platforms and uh, here are my uh, credentials. Cool, so I am uh, going to uh, demo one click info to you. And uh, what is that? It is a baseline setup for any Kubernetes cluster. Uh, basically, uh, I operate and, and work with uh, managed Kubernetes most of the time. Uh, when a cluster is ready in Azure, I, you know, I have to install a bunch of software, uh, be that Prometheus, Grafana, or the Nginx ingress controller, and so on. And um, while I was, I was doing that uh, quite successfully over, over the, the the years, I uh, I wanted to make 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 it even more uh, comfortable for myself and perhaps for you too. Uh, so, let me just show you this uh, the, the set of components here. So uh, there is so uh, it, it's accessible on oneclickinfo.com. Laszlo, yes. Um, sorry to interrupt again. <laughs> uh, can you also go on full screen because it seems to be a bit blurry. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm just making it larger or I can just go full screen. That's fine. Um, so I am switching the camera in here. Where is it? Mm, yes. Changing cameras and starting video. Just hold on for a moment. Yeah, we are currently fixing the screen. Yes, so. and then I am sharing the screen uh, like it is supposed ah, to be shared. Yeah, this <laughs> looks very good. Good, thank you for... Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> good. Uh, so, uh, 
if you land on this uh, website, uh, basically it tells you that uh, in three steps, uh, you can have uh, a Kubernetes cluster uh, with the selected components you, you choose. Um, it uh, offers Grafana Loki uh, for a logging aggregation tool. It's very similar to the Elasticsearch stack, uh, although it's a bit more modern and more tailored for cloud native needs. Uh, you can uh, install the Nginx ingress controller. You can have uh, free SSS certificates for it uh, from Let's Encrypt. And you can uh, install an OAuth proxy as well if you want to do some uh, internal uh, uh, services as well. You can install Prometheus for metrics. Uh, if you want to have a secrets workflow, uh, I very much like Sealed Secrets, uh, which is a little project from Bitnami. And uh, I also offer a single service mesh, which is a Linkerd. And uh, my plan is to extend the offering in each of the categories. So for service mesh, maybe Istio will come in and so on. So um, besides the components, uh, when, you, when you install all that, uh, these components will act together uh, very well. Uh, they are integrated. Uh, if you install let's say uh, Grafana and Prometheus, they will be accessible in the same Grafana instance and so on, and also integrated uh, with the cloud provider as well. So if you happen to be on DigitalOcean, uh, by default, the proxy protocol is enabled, uh, which means you will be able to see your end user's IP address. Uh, by default, it's just not there. So you have to configure that yourself in a few hours, uh, but you get these things for free. Um, and because uh, it's a managed service, uh, I'm able to uh, propose pull requests in, in your Git repository, and every week you will get a version update uh, of, of the latest version of the, of the selected components. And uh, besides, uh, uh, even though I'm, I'm very much focused on managed uh, Kubernetes uh, installations, it works very well locally on K3D, Minikube, or, or, or Kind. Uh, or you can self-host your Kubernetes cluster, uh, this solution will work for you. Um, and uh, there is one important thing uh, I have not talked about, uh, which is uh, everything that you uh, install with one-click infra is managed in a, in a Git repository. So it's, uh, it's basically one-click infra only interacts uh, with uh, GitHub and uh, writes your uh, deployment manifests in GitHub. And there is... Uh, component, which is an open source component, uh, the Flux uh, continuous deployment tool, which runs inside your cluster and deploys uh, this repository constantly. All right, uh, so I think it's demo time. Uh, before we, we go there, just uh, I'm, because I'm in the demo, I'm going to really compete with Mario here. Uh, let me just find Mario. Uh, my video setup didn't work as, as planned, so I have to uh, get Mario or, or maybe just stay in this other browser. So this Mario guy will, will run in the background and from time to time I'm going to check where he is and my goal is to get into the finish line sooner than he is. So. Uh, I think I will put Mario uh, at the start line and I'm also at the start line and uh, just a, a quick uh, summer of what is going to happen. So uh, I'm going to uh, log into GitHub, uh, create a new repository uh, where all the configuration will be stored. I will uh, pick the components for uh, logs, uh, ingress and metrics, and I will write uh, this configuration to Git. At that point, uh, I'm going to uh, look into the Git repository and show you what's inside uh, the repo. And uh, in parallel, I'm going to start up a cluster locally on my machine and going to bootstrap uh, this uh, GitOps uh, cycle. And uh, if I'm successful, then I'm going to be able to do that under five minutes. And then I'm going to explain what is uh, Flux, what is GitOps, and we can uh, uh, talk about your questions if you have any. So. Uh, Crossing fingers here <laughs> very much. And uh, I think it's a countdown now. So three, two, one, and go, Mario. So uh, uh, let me go to GitHub and log in. I uh, grant access to just uh, basically 
for uh, GitHub to know what repositories I have access to, but I'm only granting uh, access to selected repositories. I don't want this service to, to interact with all my repos. So let me just create a new repository uh, called speedrun and uh, make it a private repo. And uh, once I did that, and if I'm going go back to one click infra, I will be able to select uh, my speedrun repo. And I am granting access, read and write access to one click infra. Okay, uh, it's been a while since uh, I logged in, so I have to do that. I will just unshare my screen for a second until I'm using my password manager. And here we go, and sharing screen again. Cool guys, it's one minute and 15 seconds already, so I have to speed up. Cool, so there, uh, the one click info has access to my speedrun repo, and I'm quickly going to enable uh, the various components. Uh, there is also like a one page explanation uh for every service so if you are new to this stuff then uh, you you get some uh, uh help as well how to use these uh, tools so all three is enabled there is a little change log here and i'm uh, writing them uh, to git and mario is at two minutes um so it's in, it's in git right now and uh, there was, there's a single commit in this repository I just created and the components under this uh, components folder. Now, uh, I am going to uh, use K3D, uh, which is, it's like Minikube, it's a little uh, Kubernetes cluster running locally. Um, and it's very fast to start up and very uh, nice to work with it uh, on your laptop. I am adding one secret flag, which is uh, I'm just not deploying one of the default components of K3D. Uh, and by now, um, I have a single node cluster, which is not ready yet, but that's fine. And you can see the system components starting up. And while it does that, it pulls the containers. I am going to head over to one click infra again, uh, because I have to perform a one-time setup of the GitOps uh, controller loop. Uh, I'm cloning this uh, repository that uh, I just uh, created and going to create a namespace for uh, the automation and cross-checking whether the system is up. Well, Kubernetes is up, so I'm ready to apply everything uh, that is in the bootstrap folder. Now, I haven't showed you that uh, up until this point. Uh, for now, just uh, know that the automation, the Flux uh, GitOps controller is placed under, under this folder. And by applying it with kubectl, I have uh, basically uh, installed uh, this uh, uh, continuous delivery component. Um, there are a few namespaces and there are a few pods starting up. Um, this is the flux uh, component that is very important for our setup. And once it is started up, it is started up, um, it will pull everything from GitHub and deploys it on the cluster. So at this point, I am just in the mercy of uh, my internet provider, how fast uh, I can pull containers. And uh, it's not bad. Where is Mario? Well, Mario is uh, 30 seconds of winning. So here's the guy. He's even swimming right now. All right. So, and uh, because Flux was uh, coming up online, uh, all the other components on the UI are being installed. As you can see, Prometheus with the various components uh, the Indian Express controller, uh, Fana, Fana, Loki, all this uh, being uh, started. Uh, 
And uh, by the moment it is up, I am also done with my uh, challenge. I lost to Mario this time, uh, but uh, let me just finish uh, the demo and then uh, have a few tears shed. <laughs> all right, uh, so holding the containers. And uh, once all these components are running, uh, I have uh, ingress metrics and logs on the cluster, and I'm going to present you how it's that uh, accessible. So besides uh, deployments and pods, uh, there is an ingress created on Grafana Laszlo local. And because this is a local setup, I am going to edit my host file. So sudo nano etc hosts. And I have to, hold on. I have to update this IP address of Grafana Laszlo local, which I can uh, do if I, if I add this IP address right there. So, this is Grafana Laszlo local. If I do a domain name lookup, it's pointing on the right address, so I can open it in my browser. And once the container is up, uh, then the promised Oh wow, evicted. That is interesting. I, I must have some hardware problem. Okay, that is quite unusual. I've never seen this. Uh, low on resource ephemeral storage, so. So that's true, my laptop disk is full. So this was a real demo, it seems. All right. Um, I don't want you go home without seeing uh, a Grafana UI uh, with the default dashboards and the metrics. So I want to fix this somehow, but I also know that uh, freeing up space is uh, is some exercise. So what should I do? Uh, maybe I can uh, one solution could be if I just stop the share, I clean up a few gigabytes of space and then I just uh, uh, restart the cluster and then the things will come up. Uh, and I think we have time for that because it's uh, 621. Or another possible avenue we could take is uh, to just sh uh, show to you the, the GitOps repository and discuss what's inside. Um, I think, uh, Christine, if, if, if I just unshare and uh, you perhaps gather questions in the meantime, I can answer them. and. Uh, I will free up the space in just two minutes. Um, yeah, sure. So <laughs> it's a demo. This is uh, what uh, can always happen. Um, let me check um, if there are already questions. Yeah, somebody's writing no worries. So uh, take your time. Um, should I still ask you questions? Can you focus on both? Uh, just give me one minute and I'm, I'm going to be ready. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, some give the advice that you should, um, that you should, um, clean the Docker cache. Yes, that is a very good idea. And I'm going to do Docker system prune if that's, uh, Okay, so some space was reclaimed. I have 1% more space. <laughs> Let me just, uh, just find uh, what is actually trash and empty the trash. 
copy. I am at now 91% and soon going to be at a comfortable 80%. So 89. We just, we just wanted to give everyone the chance to grab a beer in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> I should have one too. <laughs> All right, 87%. No. 87, and uh, somebody writes, it kind of proves that the demo wasn't pre-recorded. Yeah, I think. Yes. Um, <laughs> All right, sharing the screen again. This wasn't pre-recorded unless Cubicon. So, uh, hey guys, we are, we are on again. And uh, so let's see if we can repair K3D on the fly. So we have the nodes and uh, we have the pods. And um, perhaps I stop K3D cluster stop uh, test and then start it up again. I think uh, by that action, all, um, all workloads are going to be placed on the cluster again. All right, unknown state. What if I just delete the pod? It's going to be come back, going to come back. Yes, they are being created and they are running, some of them. Mm. Yeah. Anybody knows the base X? No, I, I think. Shortly then, uh, restart K3D because it's a throwaway cluster. So I could just do K3D cluster RM test and uh, start it up again. And basically, you will just see again how to bootstrap the automation part. So I will create the namespace. All right, creating the namespace, applying everything, and uh, waiting, essentially, and uh, hoping that this time uh, the disk will not be full. So Mario by now had like two or three beers <laughs> and laying back. All right, it's coming up one by one. So Flux is running and in the infrastructure namespace, uh, the components are being created. Mm. 
Uh, I'm going to double check the IP address of the ingress controller. Uh, it's still pending. Um, but most likely it will get the same IP as before. All right, now it's 21. So I'm going to nano my host file once more. So I have uh, uh, the right DNS name. And uh, once the pods are running, uh, I can log into Grafana. Uh, this uh, service one click infra, I told you that it gives you uh, a one pager of how to verify uh, workloads and how to get uh, started uh, with them. And uh, it's very often like a uh, default passwords and so on. It's uh, sometimes tricky to get. So there is like a one liner, uh, how to get the uh, default password for Grafana. Uh, it's inside the cluster. So we could just uh, uh, list it out. This is uh, the default password. And uh, Grafana is initializing. Almost there. Only the ingress controller. Yes. So back to the service. So here is Grafana, uh, the admin password and uh, the admin username. And uh, basically uh, what you get is uh, pre-configured uh, data sources uh, for Prometheus, pre-configured data source for Loki, uh, which is uh, a logging aggregator tool, and also uh, it can gives you it can give you uh, metrics uh, based on the logs, how many uh, lines of logs were logged by a certain service, or or how many errors or HTTP 500s you are getting. So all this is pre-configured, and there is also a set of dashboards, and uh, one is being logs. So the last five minutes, uh, the access logs for Nginx Grafana and all the services are listed uh, with some uh, templated uh, um, dashboards as well. So I could just look at uh, the GitOps controller or maybe I could just look at uh, the Nginx um, access log. So this is the Nginx access log volume. Also, uh, you have uh, cluster metrics. Um, how many cores are booked uh, in your cluster? How, how overloaded your cluster is? Uh, what's the load? You know, the typical hardware metrics uh, sprinkled with some Kubernetes uh, metrics as well. Like if a persistent volume is getting to be full, then uh, you have this uh, little chart for that. Um, and you can also uh, have like a helicopter view on incoming requests on Nginx. So all this is uh, packaged uh, in, in, uh, together uh, with Grafana. And uh, these are uh, basically curated dashboards and uh, installed by default. Um, yeah, and some hardware metrics as well. So uh, this is served. Uh, so this is Grafana. Uh, there is uh, the uh, logging solution, which is uh, uh, Loki. Uh, and there is Prometheus with the metrics. So this uh, three uh, was what I promised to you uh, that we install and uh, here we are. And uh, besides the detours of uh, screen share and uh, disk full, uh, we are here uh, and we were beaten by Mario, but that's, that's fine. I think uh, you will have a better chance maybe to repeat this uh, back home. And uh, yeah, so this is the tool and uh, I still owe you one thing uh, to show you what's what's the magic where's the magic and uh, it's in the gitops repository uh, i told you before that uh, anything that you put into this uh, repository it's going to be applied on the on the cluster so in the components folder you can find all the components that you picked on one click infra but you can also add your uh, personal favorite yamls if you want a new uh, um, component installed which is not uh, part of one click 
And uh, inside these files, you can have plain Kubernetes YAMLs, but there is also a very interesting format uh, right here, uh, which is uh, again from Flux. It's the Helm release uh, format, uh, which is you might not know. You might know Helm. You probably know Helm, and with Helm you have uh, probably uh, shell scripts of Helm commands installing Redis, PostgreSQL, and so on, uh, with uh, different uh, options of different values set, or you even use the Helm values file. Now this Helm release format is basically just that it combines uh, the chart name and version with the values that are being applied. So basically all one click intro does is create these files and puts it into a GitOps repository. And uh, all these value values are, are curated and it uh, makes great use of the Helm release format. So this was Grafana. Uh, there are a few things uh, pre-configured, uh, more things pre-configured for Prometheus, or actually not in this uh, setup. Uh, but if you install it for DigitalOcean, for example, your uh, Nginx ingress controller will have the right annotations for that cloud provider. So you don't have to uh, Google search a couple of days to get this set up yourself. So this was the components. Uh, if you make a change or a further change, you add a new component, maybe an auth proxy, uh, you can do so. It's going to be another commit in the repository or install Linkerd uh, to uh, play around with service mesh. All right, and then uh, one more thing, it's the uh, bootstrap folder. Uh, you have seen this uh, partly before, that's the Flux uh, deployment and the Helm operator, uh, which gets you this uh, nice uh, format uh, to deploy uh, components. Again, Helm chart and values in one file, uh, which is quite, uh, quite useful, if you ask me. All right, so this, is, this was the demo. And uh, basically, what's my plan with, uh, with one click infra? Um, I want to make it a no-brainer to use it. I mean, uh, to add all the components that are, are uh, uh, typically installed in every, every uh, cluster. We haven't talked about the cert manager, the certificate manager, but I think um, almost all people who don't purchase uh, SSL certificates once the cert, man cert manager installed, and get free SSL certificates. And also all these components are uh, updated every week uh, with the latest version and uh, new components are, are uh, landing um, every so, uh, every once in a while, like I'm looking at maybe uh, the Falco project for uh, security checks. All right, and uh, perhaps in the future, I'm going to enable some uh, enterprise C features as well, like, uh, uh, I don't know if you like uh, creating diagrams for your cloud setup and your uh, your infrastructure. Uh, maybe I can uh, I can help you with that uh, with an enter enterprise package here, or uh, like a best practice how to do disaster recovery or high, high availability. Um, and just one uh, last thing uh, in my presentation is that if you want to uh, repeat this exercise on your laptop, uh, because you can. Uh, use uh, K3D like I did. Uh, there is a YouTube channel uh, I made uh, with various uh, um, videos. And if I just go back to the normal view, not, not this one, um, like this, then uh, I think in the, in the playlist, you, you can find like uh, more than 10 videos about one click infra and just uh, general Kubernetes stuff. Um, View full playlist. So if you are into um, log based metrics, there is a video for that. So uh, this was uh, the presentation. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter uh, at Laszlo CPH, uh, but you know that already. And uh, please try uh, one click info. And if something uh, you, you like, please let me know. And if something you don't like, please also let me know. And I'm open for, uh, for discussions and questions uh, right now as well. So I'm stopping the share. Thank you, Laszlo. Um, I think we already collected a bunch of questions. Um, and um, yeah, first feedback uh, that I saw somewhere with um, awesome tool or something. So um, 
It seems Thank like you. people <laughs> like it. Um, now I have to scroll through the... Um, through the questions. Uh, I see a question. Uh, what's my solution for diagram generation? Uh, well, uh, it's not done yet. And uh, I first want to do some very uh, simple thing, uh, which is uh, make the first uh, diagram by hand. Uh, so it's more like it's pain and it's time consuming to make those charts. So I make them for you. And uh, yeah, so that's that's my approach right now. But maybe if you have any automatic way to generate those diagrams, I'm uh, here for it. Um, yeah, now I found the start. So is one clock infra basically a flux bootstrap plus pick your kid as app manifest tool? Who is setting up the access token for flux to GitHub? Yes, uh, your uh, analysis is correct. And uh, one click infra is setting up th that token because uh, you know, uh, you have authenticated uh, GitHub and um, uh, by granting access to this repository, if I navigate to the repo and go to the settings, uh, the deploy key uh, was injected in the uh, bootstrap uh, or not in, in the bootstrap, actually in, at the first time of writing the manifests. So that's where it's being injected. Um. How does it manage version? It is when a new version of Linkerd is out, then what are the, the steps to update my deployment? And can I also pin a certain version somehow if necessary? Okay, so if there's a new version, uh, you will get a pull request uh, in GitHub and uh, it will have a summary of what changed, what's the, the master version of, uh, of uh, one click infra, and then you can merge, merge it if you like. Now, pinning a version, it's something I have, haven't thought about. So uh, that's something for, for me to take home. Uh, you can um, basically um, by hand pick and choose the, the parts you like. But uh, I, I understand that you, maybe it's becoming painful over time. So, so let me think about the, the version pinning problem. Uh, but basically, it's based on pull requests and uh, merging. Uh, right now, there is one stream of updates. Uh, there is a new version of one-click infra uh, templates, so you get a pull request and you merge. So that's the idea. If for some reason you want to stay at your current version, maybe you just delay. Uh, perhaps that's a solution for, for some time. Or maybe I set up multiple streams. So uh, you can stay behind on the Linkerd stream, but be top-notch on the Nginx stream. Can you make one click, click infra use a private container registry instead of the public ones? And same for Helm charts. Uh, not right now. Um, right now, it's um, it's more of a a tool for people who first want to get started. That's that's definitely a use case. And the other one is people who just uh, want to use the typical uh, Kubernetes uh, setups. Uh, Perhaps in the future, I can make it more configurable and uh, perhaps define these uh, um, curated templates where you can also in insert your own uh, templates as well. Do you have any plans about adding OpenShift for the next release or the after next? Um, so adding uh, various uh, providers is not, it's not a big thing uh, because typically things work in various Kubernetes uh, offerings. So uh, for example, with DigitalOcean, it was the ingress and so on. Adding OpenShift, it probably all it takes is for me to sit down with OpenShift and check all the uh, components and find if something is maybe not right. Maybe OpenShift is too strict on some security uh, rules and maybe I have to alter uh, the, the templates a little bit, but it's, it's definitely possible to have an OpenShift. Yes. We have many more questions. Can I monitor multi-cloud configs? No, it's, no. A, it's, 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 a, it's a very simple tool for, for C. Um, so actually, yes and no. So one click infra uh, can uh, manage multiple repos uh, because this is a 
a drop down and i personally have like five with various clients and um basically i can jump between them so each gitops repository is for one cluster so in that sense you can manage multiple clusters you just don't have an, a multi cluster overview on the same page Um, did you try to deploy one-click infra to the to the uh, to any public cloud, Azure, AWS, GCP? Um, I am using on Azure. Um, uh, again, I just have to sit down and just make sure that all the use cases that I I, I support uh, are are actually working. So uh, adding those public clouds is. Uh, is definitely in the near future. I started out with these cloud providers because I thought that uh, uh, perhaps DigitalOcean has, uh, DigitalOcean's audience uh, find this solution more appealing, but, uh, but definitely those clouds are coming. All right, um, I have um, one last question. Um, do you have some alerts installed? Uh, not by default. Uh, the Grafana interface uh, allows to define those alerts on a UI, uh, and Prometheus' uh, alerting system uh, can have YAML-based alerts. And I'm leaning towards actually to the Grafana alerting dashboard because that's just uh, more generally uh, useful for people and perhaps package those alerts in my dashboard files, uh, dashboard files, which is uh, really not a, a technical challenge. It's more like uh, collecting. Whether it scales, I uh, do not know uh, how far that scales. Um, I hope we got all the questions. Are there any questions left to Laszlo? Seems like you answered them all. Um, yeah. Um, thank you very much for sharing your. Ah, one last. Can another repro than GitHub be used? Uh, not right now. Um... Perhaps uh, installing another uh, version control system usually uh, explodes my code base in ways I don't like. It, it happened to me before, so uh, I will be a little bit cautious on adding perhaps GitLab or uh, um, Bitbucket. Uh, another question is what are the long-term plans for one click in Fratar? Right now, uh, I just want people to use it. Uh, currently, I have like uh, 20 uh repos created and used uh if i get to higher numbers then let's see uh what can come out of this i i really just uh it's early days really so i, I don't want to say say any lofty things right now i just uh, want uh, you guys to try it it's christmas time and uh perhaps you want to hack some k3b yeah uh thank you very much this was like um in intense discussion a nice demo thanks for sharing your project with us um, thanks everyone for participating and contributing um, with questions and a lot of comments and thank yous and cool projects uh, this is really nice um, if virtual formats get interactive as well um, we as said in the beginning of the presentation we will share the recording of this meeting in the coming days um, within the meetup groups and yeah uh, with that I want to wish you a nice day or evening depending on where you are and um, hope to see you soon in one of the upcoming uh, online meetups that we are going to have. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>